Hello, Vortex. So, when I was reading about the history of computers, um, I'm sure there are many of you in the Vortex that already know about this. Um, January 22nd of uh, 1984, uh, what was his name? Ridley Scott uh, directed a commercial that was advertising an at-home computer. Okay. And it was a spoof of 1984, the popular, or maybe not so popular, uh, fiction novel by George Orwell, okay? And so it was a spoof. And it was like taking a jab at their competitor, IBM. But, um, <laughs> of course my conspiratorial mind was like, nope, that was predictive programming. They're just telling you this is what we're doing and everybody's going to go along with it because they're stupid. And, <laughs> um, I was thinking about the song 1984 by David Bowie, um, which is off of the album Diamond Dogs. And for anybody that knows about David Bowie, um, this is not a conspiracy. You can look it up. Okay. Uh, David Bowie did the voiceover for a video game that's all about the Omicron. Okay. And I believe that that video game came out in like 2005 or something shit like that. It like, uh, early to mid 2000s. Okay. So I, I think that David Bowie like either knew some shit or like, um, he was involved. I don't know. I really don't know like the role of celebrities. I've always tried to figure that out. I've always been like really interested in celebrity culture because of, you know, just the whole, uh, caste system that we have in America because we have the, uh, ability to, you know, move up and, you know, do, do more, you know, like say somebody grew up in poverty. It's like they have the opportunity to go from rags to riches, you know, they can go work at a job and become the manager of that job and eventually like, you know, make a fuck ton of money and, you know, get out of a bad situation, you know, like everybody has that opportunity, like whether they realize it or not, just because that opportunity isn't like presented to them. It's like, that doesn't mean that it's not still here. Right. Well, because of that, they got to control people any way they can. So, you know, one of the main ways that they do this is through celebrity culture. And, uh, I was never really like into Donald Trump. Um, when he was up to bat in 2016, I knew he was going to win, um, because I mean, he was up against Hillary and like Hillary is just such a wretched piece of shit that I, <laughs> I just couldn't see that happening. I was like, dude, if, if, if Donald Trump wins over Hillary Clinton, it's going to be like, this massive riot with like all these, these women, you know, like that think it's not fair that, you know, they're going to say that it's sexist that he won and all that shit. And that's exactly what they did. Cause, uh, feminists are like one of the most predictable groups of people in the world. Like they just always do exactly what you expect them to do. But yeah, so 
I find it interesting, though, that, like, America is, like, totally obsessed with celebrities to the extent that, like, you have all these garbage people that are, like, mindlessly entertained by the Kardashians, and they're mindlessly entertained by, like, shows like The Bachelor and, like, Dancing with the Stars. Now, here's the thing. If, if you recognize that that stuff is crap, I feel like that's one thing. But, you know, those, those people, it's always women. Women, gay men. You know, it's, like, the, the same type of person that's just, like, totally immersed in that, like, gossipy kind of bullshit. You know, here's some petty drama. Here's a show about petty drama, and it's all fake. It's all rigged, you know, and yet we're still watching it. You know, that's the kind of shit that Americans find entertaining, right? So it's like the fact that Donald Trump was selected, um, th that's not shocking at all, you know? So it's like all these people that were so upset about it, I was like, hello, like, do they not even recognize the country that they live in and how, how much celebrities dominate the conversation unnecessarily? But anyway, um, I forgot what I was. David Bowie. David Bowie. Yeah, I do, I do think that there are, like, musicians. I mean, I know they've definitely done it with, like, you know, like Aldous Huxley. You know, he ran around with, uh. Alistair Crowley, you know, those, the seance types, you know, like the black magic types. I wonder if like, there was some sort of that spiritual power that was given to musicians, you know, not just, um, I mean, I'm sure, I'm sure. I don't think that David Bowie was just woke on this stuff and was trying to warn the public about computers and all that shit. I don't remember when Diamond Dogs came out. I was looking in the liner notes, but I couldn't find it because the album that I got was re-released. So it was re-released in like 1999, but it, it didn't say when the original release of the album was. I'm gonna have to look that up on the internet. <laughs> the internet is really cool though. Like if you know how to use it right, the internet is one of the coolest things in the world. And it just makes me sad that People just use it as a weapon against themselves, you know, and it's such a, it's such a weapon that, you know, they, they have to use it against other people too, you know, it's not enough for them to self-destruct. I mean, obviously they're not even aware that they're self-destructing, but you know, they got to take other people down with them. That's what the whole cancel culture is about. But anyway, um, but the fact, the fact that David Bowie wrote that song and the fact that he, he was the voiceover for that video game. Um, and if, if you are curious about that video game, you can look it up unless they, they might have taken it down. But, um, yeah, I just wonder. I wonder how much, like, spiritual power that gave him to, like, tell the world, like, what was going to happen if they accepted technology. Um, unfortunately, it's like people just uh, don't question it. Like I've always said, um, buying what you're sold is just as bad as doing what you're told. Um, because those same types of people that are selling you these products are working with the people that want to control your life, you know, in the government, in the media, in the education system. It's all the same shit. It's like, once they realize, like, how all this stuff is connected, they're going to hate this country, you know? Because the whole point is to prove how much people can't wait to be slaves, you know? If, and like I've said, if, if you're not willing to break your phone, then it's like you're totally fine with being a slave to big tech. You know? You don't know. 